So another movement that we're going to be using very, very often is a row. Specifically, we use TRX, we use bands. Uh, eventually, eventually, people move into dumbbells or barbells, but one of the first things they're gonna do here is a TRX row. We use this a ton in our big classes um, and even in semi-private. So the first thing when someone comes over to this is to make sure that the length is correct. So you can see on the TRX, there's two little lines here. We're gonna pull down the metal piece, pull the yellow strap, so we're at the two little lines here. We don't want it to be too long, we don't want it to be too short, otherwise they can't get in the right position to be able to do the row. So the person's gonna grab the straps, you're gonna tell them to lean back with the straps and walk their feet forward a little bit so they're at an angle. I like to have them start here with their shoulders pulled back and the straps nice and close to them so you can make the point about having their shoulders back, their chest is up, they're in a nice straight line. Then they're gonna lower down and they're gonna pull right back up to that position, pulling the straps through their body so their shoulder blades are coming together. And again, they're in a nice straight line the whole time. Take two steps back. So just show what it looked like bad. So someone who's gonna do a poor TRX row, and you see this generally the first time anyone starts, is one, they're gonna start in this position up here where they're trying to round their shoulders over and they're trying to hold on to the straps. They might put their elbows flared out so they can hold themselves up. It's because they're really weak up here. They do not know how to use these. So you have to show them. You're gonna to have to show them how to get in that position. So we'll use cues like stick your chest out, bring your shoulders back, think proud chest. Uh, I like to say, pretend like you are the shit and keep your chest pulled all the way open. That will teach them to open those shoulders up, open their chest up, and they can pull from here. Now, when they go down to the bottom, a bad position may look like this. Two things are happening here. One, the shoulders are rounding forward. Two, the hips are dropping. We only want to attack one thing at a time. So first, let's try to attack the shoulders. We want to pull the shoulders back. What's going to happen is naturally, the hips are going to come up automatically. Now, it may be too hard for them in this lower position to figure out their shoulders, so you want to bring them back up to a higher position so you can teach them they don't have as much body weight pulling down and pulling their shoulders forward. And we want to get them in that position again, so that way they can continue with the rowing movement. If you ever find someone who's you know, messing up in the middle of a movement, stop them immediately, adjust them, show them what to do, so that way they can continue back on. Another one you see is when they pull to the top, they're going to pull too much. So they're gonna to try to pull themselves over like this. Again, all we're gonna do, place hand on the back, cue them, lean themselves back, lower down, go back up nice and controlled, right to here, this is where you stop. So again, we can use our touch, we can use our hand to guide them up and down the movement, so we tell them the exact range of motion that they should go through, and they're not going too far up or too far down. Before you can do that, try your verbal cues, uh, you can try showing them what you mean, and then you can move on to the tactile cue and using your hand on the back. But those are two very common things you're gonna see is gonna be the shoulders and the hips. Uh, every once in a while you might see something crazy what people do with their arms. Um, all you need to do, stop them, show them again what to do, and then allow them to try it for themselves before you start to use the touch.